What's next? What's next for Roddenberry Productions? For the Roddenberry Company? Everything. I mean, now we're we're not just. It's not just this little tiny yeah. company that could anymore. Now you're becoming, you know, a media player in all of this. What's yeah, next? and we couldn't be happier about that. I think that, you know, um, as we move forward, we're going to be getting our own productions as well. We have some great partners that we're doing certain development things with that will probably end up coming to fruition soon. Um, in addition to that, at this very convention, we announce um, a, a groundbreaking project that we're going to be working on. It's the first ever 360 degree film project. It's titled uh, White Room O2B3 and uh, it's an ama it uses an amazing piece of technology which you know is funny to us you know Gene during his day used people at MIT and JPL and all these these people who knew about the technology of the day to innovate his thinking in regard to what the future of technology might be. The gadgets that you see on Star Trek all that kind of stuff. In almost uh, you know a a, a redundant fashion, you know, or repetitive in some way, you know, we found this piece of technology, this 360 degree camera that literally shoots all the way around itself um, in all areas so that you literally can't escape the camera and we found a way to utilize it for storytelling and we were literally inspired so much by the technology that we created this fantastic science fiction piece that we're going to be shooting at the end of this uh, at the, end of the summer that is going to be the first ever um, you know 360 degree film project of its kind and we're really really excited about it it's a great story it's got great characters it's very Roddenberry and many, many ways, and at the same time, you can look at it and say, it's an experience much more than a film. The ability for a person to be able to, if it's in a dome theater, kind of watch a dome theater and see all 360 degrees of what's going on at one time, or if on your computer, you're going to watch it and be able to move with the mouse what area of the room you're going to be able to look at at any time you desire, is going to allow people to see things they wouldn't normally see about a film. It's going to allow us to layer things in that aren't normally what you'd only see when the director chooses this angle, that we can bring more and more meaning to the story and more and more interesting details to it than ever before. And uh, it's it's something that, uh, you know, I think in pushing the boundaries and breaking molds of, uh, you know, of the tradition of Roddenberry itself uh, is something we wanted to make sure, look, let's take advantage of this opportunity and push that boundary as well in this new way. So, like, uh, who's the writer? Like who's the uh, writer? Actually, it was Tori Mel. He's an internal writer, and he came up with this great idea. We made sure that it fit the constraints that we needed to. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, uh, a gentleman named Greg Aronowitz is going to be directing. Greg cut his teeth under people like Steven Spielberg and Roger Corman. He's worked on the most amazing movies, AI and uh, Saving Private Ryan, and all these kinds of things. He's a fantastic set designer as well as an accomplished uh, accomplished director. He directs The Guild, if you know. He's directed some of those episodes as well as uh, some fantastic stuff in the um, in, in the world of television. And, uh, and he's going to be directing it and it's a tremendous challenge for him. He's got to be directing six different people on nine different cameras simultaneously throughout the entire shoot and there are very few places to cut in the script. So it's not only going to be that immense amount of, of, of people and cameras, but he's also got to do it for a len lengthy period of time compared to a normal shoot where you're kind of able to say, take one, take two, yeah. and you're kind of on people for a very short period of time. It's a fantastic challenge and we're definitely up for it. And uh, I think the response and the result we're going to get from it's going to be uh, spectacular. Yeah, well, I mean, talk about trying to be groundbreaking, innovative, do something different, but also recognizing technology that's available to you and seeing, well, how can we use it? Because, I mean, there's a lot of great technology, but sometimes, what do you do with it now? All right, yeah. so you can do a camera, it goes 360 degrees, so what? But you guys found us so what? I, I think that's absolutely right. I think that when we uh, first were introduced to the camera by the company uh, Social Animal, who's the company that, that owns the camera, um, you know, it was a camera that was used appropriately for things like music videos or uh, taking tours around uh, museums such yeah. that you could see everywhere. You can see all around. And it works great for those things. And for a little while, we were amazed with the technology, but thought to ourselves, how can we use it? We're not sure. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't work for what we normally do and we just were creative enough and out-of-the-box thinking enough to recognize 
that if you're able to um, place this camera in certain circumstances, it could be one of the most unique storytelling devices you know, out there. You just gotta figure out the way to use it, and I think we have.